So last Sunday, we began looking at something. The dangers of delay. I explained deeply what delay is. I showed us from the scriptures. If you were not here, go back and connect. So it will help you. So we looked at what delay can do in the lives of people. We saw an example with the children of Israel that even though there was a a strict warning from the Lord after he spoke to them, he gave a strict warning that they should not represent him with anything or mold an image. But the Bible told us that they still went and heard and broke the commandment of God. And the reason is because of what delay can do. I gave you about five or six points. Do you remember? The things that delay can cause. Can we run through them quickly? If you find a sister, hey, Let's leave children of Israel. Let's talk about us. Tell your neighbor, leave the children of Israel. Let's talk about the children of giftings. Yes, because you can capitalize. Say, it's the children of Israel. Let's talk about us. A sister who is serving God wholeheartedly. She has kept herself trusting God that a good man from the Lord will come. Some, maybe the initial stage of their life before they came to church, they were not that dedicated. They've lived, you know, some kind of life. They were loosed, kind of. Then they came to Christ, heard the word of God, and decided to live right. It's not like they don't know method. It's not like they don't know what's up. I ask your neighbor, do you know what's up? They still understand some reading. When you give them little, little sign, they know. But they left those things for the sake of the gospel. Gave their life to Christ, became committed. And they began to observe. When they came to Christ, they were told that life will be beautiful. Everything will be fine. This whole transaction happened between 24, 25. Now it's six years. She's 31. And she's not glued or hooked to a serious brother. Nobody has ever asked her out or to say, I want to marry you. So it's now. She's attending programs. You know one of the wisest people you can meet? Wise in, in cunning, in in, in craftiness and evil are believers. Now they are attending early morning prayer somewhere. Or sowing certain seed on certain altars. The reason being that in their life they suspect there is something wrong somewhere. And I do not believe that my man of God, even though I love him wholeheartedly and I believe that God has called him for me, I believe that there are certain areas of ministry where God has not given him. So let me go out. Tell your neighbor, be wise. 
Tell the people behind you, be wise. Point at someone, be wiser. So they secretly go. It will shock you that when you enter the rooms and houses of some of us, you will find ancient oil. Ancient oil. Ever true. Sold to me. From a ministry. With all my heart. I embrace it. This is the oil that brings up. You are, a, you are a criminal. Then you will still come, man of God, I believe in your anointing. Or you are a business person. And over the years, or maybe you have written jam to the point jam is included in your nickname. There are fathers here and mothers who had dedicated their lives to the service of God. And over the years, they haven't seen the result that they truly anticipated for. Some people are having, carrying prophecies of five years, six years, ten years. To the point now, their heart delay is dangerous. Delay is wicked. I told us there's a great difference between patience, waiting, and delay. They are all spirit, but you must understand their functions and works. Hello. There's an Igbo adage they used to play with that thing. They will tell you, let me not speak it in Igbo. Let me speak it. They say they don't use a normal eye to attend the white garment church. So now speak it in Igbo. Did, did you get what I'm saying now? That when you find my uncle once told me, he said, when you find a man, a full-fledged man, on a Thursday morning, attending women's program, he said, they say it's women's program, Thursday morning, fruit of the womb, or God. is to show you delay can make a man attend a program that is not his. You will pray a prayer point. You see, even though we are solidified in this place, you may laugh. I've taught you doctrines. There are certain songs we don't sing. There are certain prayers we don't pray. There are certain things we don't believe. But you know one thing? You can see a man, a full-fledged believer, or even a pastor from this place, Walk out of known and taught doctrines because of delay. You know why? When you begin to hear people say, any way in a way, the reason behind it is delay. Open your ears and hear me. There is no one, if you are Waiting, I told you, go back and check it. There will be this amount of peace. If you are impatient, there will be this peace. But delay would always have shame with it and struggle. Insult. It's not like they don't insult the man that is waiting on God. But it's not a continuous insult. Even when it comes, even you yourself, you'll be smiling because you know that there's nothing wrong. It's like the woman that is pregnant. Every time you go to the market, they ask, Ah, mother, you never born. But you know. Hello. You know it's not time, right? 
And when the time comes, you what? You born. Tell your neighbor you born. So delay can bring about unthinkable decisions and moves. Your plan was to travel to America. Delay has so wired you. You are not going to Sao Tome. You, they ask you, say, travel, not travel. Make I just come out. Did you, did you, do you remember that was the first one? What's the second one in your list? Number two? Okro. How did you get okro from this whole thing? Ororo. Ah, Elio. Read it again. Read it. One, two, go. So people are going to corrupt their ways by themselves. Forget that thing. I hate Christians who use that word. That phrase. Forget that thing. I've been in church. I will tell you about church. Listen. Walk out. Leave that person. They will send you to a journey of no return. The direction is will be the bottomless pit. There are people marked for destruction. They are lost. They will never come back. See, no matter the amount of fasting and prayer you do, I can tell you of such people when you meet them. Number one, people who have corrupted mindset. They see profit and gain and business in everything. They can't be saved. Their senior brother was Judas. The grandfather that taught him is Gehazi. And there are pastors like that. Once they come into your congregation, you say, wow, see money. Abala. They even speak in tongues. Ebi kata. Bubu kabua. Bubu. You would think they are born again. So you corrupt your ways because of delay. It's easy for me to make money out of you. All you need is to believe in a man. I can begin to sell water here. Sell salt. Add tomato. Today was on this. It's the end rice. The office will be open. All manner of items. So long as there's result. I will fix morning program. Where people will pray. I will tell you about an apple that the Holy Ghost gave in the dream. And I will make sure one, if all I need is one testimony. And I drank to the apple and I conceived. It don't finish. I don't sell. Come and see where people will be ordering apple. Sending to Kaduna. Then I will buy cars. I will have entourage. The ministry will be bigger. There's a way I'll be walking. Police army will be a clear road, clear road. That's not grace and money. That's hard and money. No, no, no. Not even hard. That's criminal and money. I will say all manner of oil. I will tell you I'm going to Jerusalem. I will snap picture from Jerusalem. See this seed. Look at this oil. Maji, you are, you, are, you are laughing. Small bottle. How much is it? Eighty dollar. Come and see Q. You will sell your rapper. Testimonies will be coming out. I will be bringing men that I don't know where they are from. Will come on this altar. That is the leverage that young ministers I see coming up are seeing. Scarcely you find a ministry you enter in Lagos without having them to prioritize something. 
that they give to you as an element. Yet they will come out and tell you, we don't sell, we don't collect money, we don't ogre. Did you give the water free? It is delay. Are you with me? I will be honest, I'm telling you the truth. I lie not. My conscience bear me record. And because of that, I've stayed through with God over the years. And he's trying the patience, the belief of his saint man. He wants to see something also. So I'm not going to do, you can't wake up in the morning one day or midnight and say, Pastor Chi, Pastor Chi, sir, meet me by 11.30. God pass us, God pass us. If you are coming, bring shove. This ministry no great grow, we must grow up. Sir, what is that? Shut up. Do as I say. It's okay, sir. Bury that head there. Head, shut up. Bury for back. Bury here. Bury here. Any day you leak my secret, you die. We'll now become midnight workers. Digging the ground, we'll bury. And you will not know you will come in the morning. You will walk past in the name of God. While we're trying to put this place, renovating this place, I never knew that was the mindset of the people that came to work with us. The moment I re- resume in the morning, I just ask them what are the materials required. They just say, I just say, okay, take the check, I'm out. Where are you going to? I'm going back to prayer. I will go and be praying, getting messages from the Lord. Then I will return in the evening and I will see what they have done. I say, ah, this one, you didn't do it well. Do it like this. I'm off. Then one day, towards the close of the whole thing, one of them was having a conversation with Pastor Chi and he told him, he said, now I believe that your man of God is a man of God. He said, why? He said, when we were casting, he said they were vigilant to observe and when they were breaking the ground, to see if we are going to do anything inside. Because that is the norm with pastors. So I was now thinking, what are we going to bury you? There must be a burying. So I joked with Pastor Chi. I said, the next time is you that will bury You find they corrupt their ways because of delay. And the reason is because many of them want to achieve it faster. We want to make it quickly. Calm down now. Calm down. No matter how hungry a man is, no matter how hungry, you can't finish a bag of gari in five minutes. I ask your neighbor, can you finish half of a bag of gari in five minutes? You go die there. So calm down. Number three, your notes. People turn aside quickly to other things or gods. Do you know there are some elders in the church that have a tomokbo? They lick it. Up one, up one. I go, I go on. Then they are going to the market. But it's an elder. He put his Bible here. Then they are singing, Today, 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 Jesus has answered me. Elder Joseph, my brother, peace of the Lord be with you. But elder has leaked something. Some sisters in the church will begin to follow an easy wine on Facebook because of delay. They'll tell you, take an egg and salt, bait it with some 35. 
Can I? Okay, you know, clap for yourself. You know yourself. Why I like is that you've, you've, you've loved short confession. Your enemy will not look at you again. Psalm 91. Midnight and soap. You do. You are corrupt. You, you, you see, you are turning, but you do not know. It is delayed in, in chat. Did I tell you the testimony of that woman who was drinking blood? They'll kill chicken. They'll pour the blood in the cup. She would drink because she was believing God for the fruit of the womb. When that one stopped walking, they, they told her to go, go to the market Price goat, then collect, buy the rope and use it to tie yourself. So she was tying herself continuously, walking. It was in service. I said, There's something. She confessed. Delay. And yet she ties that into church. Number four, the heart is sick because of delay. That means if they are teaching the word of God or somebody is talking to you about Christ, this is how you bend your neck. Why? You no longer have strength. You have given up. Number five, people doubt prophecies and the word of God. I pray for you. That every prophecy upon you that has not materialized will find its way in the name of Jesus. And the last one that I gave you, they will lose excitement. Have you seen people working for God and their life is not progressing? Say so forget that thing. So, having known that, now let's delve into something else. Let's progress a little. Part two. Exodus 32 was our scripture from verse 1. Let's go. Okay, before we read Exodus, let's do Hebrews chapter 2, 1 and 2. Are you with me? Did you learn something? So even if I go home now, you learn something. Obano Moriamu Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. That means the things that you have heard. It says give more earnest heed. Least at any time we should let them sleep. Verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward, verse 3 says, How then shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect? Do not neglect this message because I know what I'm telling you. Some of you are calm in church, but the moment you get home, you are a thinking machine. You trouble yourself by yourself. God, you must do it now. So the moment you can cite the delay, it is now arousing many things in you that you do not know are there. Can we now go back to Exodus chapter 32? Everybody now pay keen attention and follow me. We are going to read Exodus 32 down to verse, from verse 1 to 27. We read that on Sunday. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, 
the man that brought us out, out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what is become of him. Verse 2. And Aaron said unto them, Break up the golden earrings which, in the ears, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Alright? And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and they brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. That means these people have deserted God now. Are you with me? And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the, mount, on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and they rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. Remember, he's in the presence of God on the mountain. Go thou for thy people. Which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, they have what? Corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly. Remember? I told you delay will make a man corrupt, make people turn aside quickly. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto. And said, This be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people. And behold, it's a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them. That I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord, his God, and said, Lord... Doth thy rod wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Uh Uh-uh. Wherefore, the Egyptians will speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce rod and repent of this evil against thy people. Why are you good like that? Have you forgotten Abraham? Have you forgotten Isaac? And Israel thy servant? To whom thou swearest by thy own self and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he taught to do unto his people. Wow. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two t- tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God. Graving upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people. As they shouted, he said unto Moses, There's a noise of war in the camp. Moses told him immediately, verse 18. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing, Do I hear? Okay? And it came to pass. As soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the table out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel to drink of it. He said, drink your gods. And he took the calf which they had made. Okay? And Moses said unto Aaron, What did these people unto thee? That thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. 22. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people. 
that they are set on mischief. Their direction is mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever had any good, let them break it off. So they gave me, then I cast into the fire, and there came out this calf. And Moses, when Moses saw that the people were naked, remember they are having celebration. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp. Now watch this now. This is where I'm going to. So when he saw them being naked, he now said, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi, they gather themselves together unto him. Verse 27. And he said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, And every man his companion. And every man his neighbor. Go back to verse 26. The ultimate question was. Who is on the Lord's side? The moment he asked that question. This is a definite and very important question. That we must ask ourselves today. Dealing with the subject of the delays and the dangers of delay. We must always retrieve and come back to this question. Who and who is on the Lord's side? I I bet you before I continue to help me ask that question, five person, look at them, some you point them, say, are you on the Lord's side? Are you? Are you on the Lord's side? There's a song like that, right? Who is on the Lord's side? Many a times we sing it and say it without knowing what it truly means. It is true that there are many things on the Lord's side. One of the things you find on the Lord's side is divine favor. Divine guidance. Divine acceptation. Divine acceptance. Preservation. Protection. There are many promises. There are many blessings to be on the Lord's side. Are you with me? There are beautiful things to see. That you behold when you come on the Lord's side. And those are the things that people truly clamor for. When they say I'm on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side? I want to know. You want to know. So the moment I say the Lord's side. It's like supporting the Lord. Have you heard that saying? One with God is majority. Even though it's not scriptural. But it sounds good. What it means is that if you are with God, if you are on the Lord's side. Have you also read what Paul wrote in the book of Romans? It says, if God be for us, who can be against us? But in this context now, it is not if God be for us, but it is If we be with God, who can now defeat us? Because the side of God or the place of God or the Lord's side is the place of total victory. Lift your two hands and say, I have victory. victory. But you see, the people were on this side. That even though, look at verse 26. Even though he asked this ultimate question. The very first people that responded were the Levi. Who are the Levi? The priesthood. They are those who 
understand priesthood. They are those who understand what it means to be an intercessor. Men of prayer. And he told them, because you guys are on the Lord's side, take a staff now, kill everyone that is not on the Lord's side. I want to tell you something today. And this is where I start from. It is not always going to be very sweet because you are on the Lord's side. He's not the one bringing it. That's what I want you to know. The Lord's side continuously, 24-7 is a sweet place, beautiful place to behold, beautiful place to be. But I'm telling you, for the fact that you are in this world, there are certain things you must expect that will happen to you. And this is what Christians do not like to hear. I'm on the Lord's side, but I'm still being persecuted. I'm on the Lord's side, but there are certain prayers that have not been answered. I'm on the Lord's side, but I've not eaten for one week. I'm on the Lord's side, but the job has not been granted. I'm on the Lord's side, but they have not given me the visa. I'm on the Lord's side, but I've not gotten married. Yes, a man can be on the Lord's side, but yet have not eaten for two weeks. Yet the Lord is still your ultimate provider. He is your shepherd. He wants to also know what do you, what will be your response when you have not eaten for two weeks? If the client haven't called you, what are you going to say? If they have not admitted into the university, what is going to be your response? Are you going to break the tablet just like Moses did? Look at what Job said. Do you know Job? Do you know Job? You know Job has a house somewhere in Mabanoku. Oh, you don't know? Job was a landlord. All right, ask Pastor Chi. That guy the Bible told us was the richest guy in the, and he had estate. So one of the estate is around Alakbere. You can ask Pastor Chris. Job was wealthy. The Bible told us he has 10 children. Beautiful wife. Every day, and now they will be singing, Ada, Ada, yo. Everybody, they wait, even though it's not wedding. Coming out was like, oh my God. She would eat, dress in beautiful regalia. Until one day, there was a conversation in the realms of the spirit. Job was on the Lord's side. God was bragging, have you seen my servant Job? There's none like him. Satan said, are you not the one that blessed him? Touch him and let's see what's going to happen. He said, okay, you're free, but don't touch his soul. The Bible told us everything the man had diminished in one day. How many of you can stand to lose 10 children in one day? That's mental hazard. Emotional trauma. No. Traumatized. No. Emotional imbalance. No. These are good English. Are you with me? All companies down. Animals down. The only people that he had were slaves. One one that came to report. Son, I'm the only one survived. Son, the only one survived. The Bible told us that Job tore his garment and poured ashes upon himself and said, woe is me. What am I living for? He said, and I knew it and I was not quiet. I kept saying that there's something that is not right. The Bible tells us, and God was in heaven. 
seated and is watching you. It's time for the ultimate question to be posed, the light of it to be posed on this man. Who is on the Lord's side? And the guy was there, tearing himself as if that was all. The Bible tells us the same accuser came and inflicted him with boils that have no name. From head to toe, you can't see it, you can't lie. The wife finally came out. Job chapter 2 verse 10. Hear the confession of a wife. Who was claiming before that she was on the Lord's side. But you do not know it's because pepper soup are flowing. Rice is flowing. They are changing her body. Wearing necklace. Buying human hair. Go to verse 8. Let's start from verse 8. And he took him a pot shed to scrap himself with her. And he sat down among the ashes. The guy is always sitting among ashes. <laughs> then his wife said unto him, Do you still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. Okay, you are still carrying this Bible. They announced your jam resort today. You are going for middle service. You are a fool. No, no, no. Ma, my pastor just called me. You, did, what did you say? You say your pastor. Shebi is anybody that he prays for things used to. Has he not prayed for you? You're deceiving yourself. Cause God and die. Sir, you gave us prophecy. Now. I want you to look at what the wife challenged. It was his integrity. There are two things, two interpretations to this. The woman meant well, number one. Because she feels that the only way, this man is suffering too much. The only way death can come and claim you is to deny God. Then you will die so that you can go and rest. Number two. She was looking at the husband as a very good man. How can a God do this thing to you? He's not worth following. Curse him and die, Jerry. This is a man. The woman has the only. This is a man who is like this. You you can't turn. The Bible says he sits on ashes. Just that they took your phone. It's a blessing. The, the phone, before it peaks, you hit it. They now stole it. They helped you. You could not take praise. You are saying, MJ, there is your magnet. Verse 10, Job now told the wife. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. This is a husband replying to the wife. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? Now, I like his motivation, but his revelation was wrong. You can have a good motivation that has a poor revelation. I say that again. You can have a good motivation that has a poor revelation. A wrong revelation. 
a misguided revelation. An untruthful revelation. Yes, we receive good from God. But this bad is not from God. Hmm? But at least that was a good answer. Okay, you can eat rice. You can collect when God gives you fried rice. But small temptation, you fall. You are a foolish wife. Help me ask someone, are you wise or foolish? The Bible tells us, in all these did not Job sin with his lips. Brothers and sisters, I stand here to tell you something. When you are on the Lord's side, When you are on the Lord's side, fully on the Lord's side, every treatment from him should be accepted. And this is why you need to know the will of God. I'm not saying that he's going to put cancer on you. No. God does not distribute cancer. In the first place, he never brought cancer. I'm not saying that God is going to make you poor. No. But sometimes you make your prayers and they don't come instantly. You don't change. I say, well, I pray and in the morning God didn't answer me. God is a quick fixer. But when he's dealing with his mature children, he trains them. He allows them to go through the process. But yet he's a quick fixer. He doesn't work with time. He does things snappy. But sometimes when he's training you, for you to be matured, are you still on the Lord's side? Are you still on the Lord's side? This is the kind of message you find gradually slipping out of the church. We have changed all our songs. Everything now double, double. This kind God, another one in order. We have changed everything. It must involve blessing, prosperity. No, sir. The early Christian understood what it means to suffer for the Lord. And yet they are still on the Lord's side. Remember the case. There were three Hebrew guys. The Bible told us their names. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Do you know them? They live just down the road here. Oh you don't know? The Bible tells us something. That one day a king decided. And mowed an image. And said everybody should bow. And you're on the Lord's side. Haven't you seen people who take jobs and they tell them, we're going to pay you handsomely here. But even on Sundays, you're going to be working. Wow. And the money, the pay is in dollars. You say, wow, my God. I can can follow online. You become an online pastor. I can follow online and I send my dollars to pastor. The church needs dollar. They are going to be so happy. Hmm. The Bible says in all of these things, <laughs> uh, me, you're laughing. Job did not sin against God. And you went and took the job. Now, it's been six Sundays you've not attended. Even the online, you are not lying. You are not in line to follow online. Today, you are in Port Harcourt. The next day, you are in Abuja. There's a sheep batting, taking you guys. You're eating different meals. You guys who follow the sheep, you are in Spain. You are calling, you are in this. You say, oh, life is beautiful. Then once in a while, you say, child. 
I don't know how my man of God will be faring now. Oh, let me call some sisters in church. Sister Oluchi, oh, brother Timothy, how are you? I'm fine. Hi, church. Hi, pastor. I've missed you guys. Where are you right now? Oh, I'm telling you, we're in Bulgaria. You are in Borga. Bulgaria, B. You will soon see of Lyria. Did you? I, I follow online. I follow online. Before you know what's happening, your heart begins to melt. You're melting. You're melting. You're melting. You're melting. One day now, you're with a glass cup of wine. You're melting. The next day, you're smoking. They say the atmosphere is cold. You need something to warm you up. But the scripture says, be not drunk with wine. We are in in essence, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. The unbelievers are watching and they are laughing you, but you are here. Instead of introducing the Holy Ghost, they introduce wine into you. You know what happened? You dismantled your belief. Your being on the Lord's side was tested. What tested you? Dollar. Haven't you seen sisters who get married and stop coming to church? Some give birth and they stop coming to church. Baby, oh, baby. Look at these guys. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. The success that will take you away from his presence, may he not come your way. Amen. You better say your amen louder. Amen. Because you don't know the one the devil is planning for you. There are many pastors now who don't read Bible. There's a man, you know, the owner of Costaris. Very wealthy man. It's one of the number him among the richest in Nigeria. There's a friend of mine who once called, you know. If the man is going through tough times and things are not, he goes to this prophet. And I met him somewhere. I won't mention the name. He came to speak. And there was something he said. He said, no matter how wealthy and how high God takes me in life, I will never cease to represent him. On many occasions, cameras have caught him preaching along the street. He will pack his jeep. And he's talking. He's on the Lord's side. You, all you have is a bag that was borrowed you. You can't even evangelize and talk to someone. When I see people who, little temptation, they fall off. I tell you something, the thing was not grounded in them yet before. They were only faking it. They're not done. Look at these guys. Daniel 3.16. They told the king categorically. we we'll read to verse 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, no waste your time. We are not careful to answer in this matter, this particular matter. We are not careful. Though. He said, what do you mean? If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Uh huh. But if not, if he chooses not to bring me out, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This 
is the confession of a man who is on the Lord's side. When you are tested, it's when we know whether you are on the Lord's side. It's not when he supplies you fried rice. Every man can claim to be with the Lord when things are rosy. There is no marriage that will not go through tough times. No marriage. No relationship. There is no relationship that will not be tested. If it's not childlessness, it will be money. If it's not money, it will be job. If it's not job, it will be family. If it's not family, there must be something. What will be your stand when that time comes? Haven't you heard of people who got married? Six months after the man lost his job. And you thought it was going to end because of his well vast CV intimidating and you do not know that that journey that you are seeing is six years. Everybody would depend on you, the woman. And what do you do? You are a teacher. And the government are owing you for six months. Sometimes you come back home, you hit your head. The man will stay, we're looking at you. You, just, ah! you start crying. Ah! What is this? Yet, there will be a guy, there's a young guy outside, eyeing you. Telling you, why are you suffering for nothing? Just accept my proposal. I'm going to make your life beautiful. You're too beautiful to suffer. You shouldn't be in this mess. Let me take your mess and convert into a message. Oh boy. Oh, what mess to message? Converter. The converter. And you are now thinking, you come back home, the man you loved and you wedded, there's a way you are looking at him. You give him food, he checks the soup, there's no meat. He says, honey, there's no meat in this soup. Honey, hmm. the reason I've not spoken, <laughs> hey, I'm respecting our Christian vow. Eat this food or I return it. <laughs> he said, has he gotten to that? I only asked the question. She is. This used to be a dedicated Christian speaking in tongues but the trials of life has come. It's time now to know are you on the Lord's side? Job said, shall we receive good and not also receive evil? The guy is sitting down. Now, every evening, this mess, mess to message guy is sending you messages, sending you rows. You know, you are seeing things on your phone, on your WhatsApp. He's making you laugh all the time. The moment your husband enters, I say, what is it? Innocent, what is the problem? Uh-uh. Honey, can't I even just talk with you? What do you want to say? Say it, say it, say it. I don't have time. You just came back. We, don't, we no longer have time as family. Which time? Brothers and sisters, love is good. But I pray for you. Good situations and money is the cream of marriage. What makes a relationship sweet is not only love. I said first, good situation. Don't say money. Because our grandparents and great-grandparents never had those money you are looking for. 
I'm saying good situations. The understanding that you and I pull through in good situations, then you add it, the little money. Relationship will be beautiful. Because there are homes with so much money, and yet, they are not happy. You are now considering that guy that turns mess into message. You are there now considering it. Oh, 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 oh God, oh God, oh. So now he's sending you, he will send you money, send you things. And after a while, you are now leaving your matrimonial bed little by little. Little by little. And you fall. Only for you to discover that truly the guy has nothing to offer you. He could not convert your mess. He gave you back your mess. <laughs> and now massaged your mess. And your mess started rising. Onesis. God has spoken to a man by the name Moses and told him, Moses, I want you to go and bring my children out of Egypt. Moses was willing. Moses was on the Lord's side. But there was a mistake that would have cost him. Exodus chapter 4 verse 21. I'm rounding off here. Are you learning? Mbem cheta rumo monyere mumeti e haleluya. Mbem cheta yo mumere mumeti e haleluya. Haleluya, 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 haleluya. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mbem chetariyo mumere mumeti e hallelujah. Mbem chetari komo nyere mumeti e hallelujah. Mbem chetru mumo nyere mumeti e hallelujah. Mbem chetari yo mumera nyumeti e hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Tell your neighbor it shall be well with you. Exodus 4.21 Look at it. And the Lord said to Moses, When thou goest to, to return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand, but I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. Okay? So he's a man of God. He's going now with zeal. He's on the Lord's side by this. Look at verse 22. Immediately the Lord that spoke to him and chose him came to kill this guy. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. 23. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that, thou, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. This is a man of God. He's on the Lord's side. Then the next action will shock you. 24. And it came to pass. The guy is on his way now going. By the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Don't tell me you are on the Lord's side and you desecrate his personal instructions. Your being on his side is not total. It's not full. It's not complete. He wants complete obedience. Half obedience is no obedience before God. Are you with me? Give me the amplified of verse 24. He sought to kill him. And we'll read it to 26. Amplified. Along the way, at a resting place, the guy stayed to rest. Ah! Hey, thank God. This journey, eh? Not an easy one. Then the Lord met Moses and sought to kill him. The Bible says, he made him acutely and almost fatally ill. The guy all of a sudden became ill. He was there. Yeah, yeah. The wife began to perceive this thing. How can you be saint of the Lord and you are this ill? 25. Look at what Moses said. Now, apparently, he had failed to circumcise one of his sons. His wife being opposed to it, but seeing his life in such danger, Zipporah took a flint knife and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it to touch Moses' feet and said, Surely a husband of blood you are to me. He had two sons. He had circumcised one. Remember, he married from Ethiopia. The wife did not like the fact that you had circumcised the covenant of your father. And it was one of these reasons that God said, don't marry from any other place. So she grew up knowing that the place where she came from, men do not get circumcised. But this is a covenant with This man you married. And she opposed. His wife being opposed to it. That means the wife opposed the circumcision of the second son. When she opposed, the man of God accepted even though he knew it was wrong. Half obedience is not obedience. It's an incomplete obedience. Has God told you to go? Why did you stop? Are you learning? The dangers of what? Delay. 
who is on the Lord's side. He told you to give up for 1,000. He took 955.2 cobble. The wife, you know some of these, there are some brothers I really do not like. These brothers of, I'll discuss with my wife when it comes to spiritual instructions. You see all those brothers? I don't like them. Because she might want to sell you her own idea that is not funny. The Lord told us to do this. Okay. But when the Lord told us, wait, are you sure? And so you could just run. The Lord told you. I they told you. We never pay children school fees, oh. Before they told you. Go pay children school fees before they told you. If that when that money no there, you know told you. As the money comes and I told you. Come, 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 come. I need to take You now say, Oh God, you see the woman you gave me. So you now pay the children's school fees. The Bible says the Lord met him and sought to kill him. It was now the woman who opposed that quickly when he saw the wife, the husband dying, knew in her mind. How did she know that this was the problem? Tell someone, fear women. <laughs> oh, Benny. How did they know? Quickly took knife, brought the boy. She's now, she became a doctor. The moment he caught the thing, he just poured the blood. You are a bloody husband. What he's trying to say is that you should have stood your ground, even though I'm a woman. What I say should not matter if you know it is this costly. Stand your ground. The Lord has said, the Lord has said, don't sugarcoat it, don't sympathize, don't emotionalize it. Honey, think about it now. They are rubbing your beards. Honey, you don't even have beers. They will come midnight. As you are sleeping. Honey. Honey, I want to tell you something. Can't you sleep? I'm tired. Honey. Honey pie. It's the Greek word of honey pie. It's where they get the word meat pie. <laughs> Don't accept. They want to sell you. Look at the next verse. 26. When he left Moses alone to recover, Zipporah said, A husband of blood are you because of the circumcision. It was here this experience that made Moses fully stand on the Lord's side, he never changed. I have one more example. Then we pray. And I pray for you. If you are going to be on the Lord's side, you will hate what he hates and love what he loves. First Samuel. Are you there? Some of you. And I will use this to talk to some ministers. First Samuel 16. Verse 1. Can you see how many examples I've given you today? A man who will be fully on the Lord's side 
would always make inquiries concerning his will, his purpose, and intentions. You will always inquire concerning his will, purpose, and intentions. Don't do a thing because it's pleasing to you. Do a thing because it's pleasing to God. Are you there? Now, Samuel was a prophet of God on the side of God. Stand. So, this is God. This is King 1 and this is King 2. And here is a man of God. So, I spoke to him and told him, ordain this guy for me. So go there. Do as if you pour oil on him. So he has poured oil on him. Your own is just to pour oil. So he's a prophet. Go back to your seat. So this guy is king. He's on my side. I made him king. He does not understand as to why I did that. He's reigning. Using all my energy, my anointing, my power to reign. I gave him favor. Then one day, he decided that because he has grown, he could no longer wait for my dictates. He would do things by himself. And the Lord rejected him. But this guy loved this guy, this prophet. He loved him. Love him so much. Oh. He will always send him things. He just loved him. And the Lord knew that there was a love between these two. So, verse 1, 16, 1 Samuel. The Bible tells us, the Lord said to Samuel, Why are you mourning for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I provided me a king among his sons. Go and anoint this guy to be king. This one is delaying from going because he loved this guy. The delay of the prophet is why many have not been coronated. Because they are not fully on the Lord's side. They are weeping and mourning over the one that the Lord has rejected. You know, sometimes people leave us. We still remember how they cook their onion and cucumber. They have left. Train another person to cook the cucumber. If he doesn't know how to cook it, be managing it until he learns. Don't mourn. When you mourn over the one that the Lord has rejected, it proves that your obedience to God, your loyalty to Him is not complete. Thank you. Why are you mourning? I've rejected Him. I pray for you today with my hand lifted. 
the grace for open doors. Receive it now. May you not walk into trap thinking it's an open door. Yes. 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 Some open doors are traps. Some marriage proposals are traps. Some women are not wives. They are knives. They are just looking for a way to first remove your ear. Verse 2. And Samuel said, how can I go? How? 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 Are you still on the Lord's side? Some instructions from him will feel killing to your flesh. But if you're on his side, you will follow soon. You're going to pray now. Some of you left an instruction and is the reason why things slowed down. You left an instruction. 